So recently I finished my undergrad at OCAD in the Digital Futures program. And at the end of the year, we have this exhibition of graduating students work called GradX. My final project was about making fonts by growing crystals and inputting the letters into a machine learning model. For GradX, I set up a space where people could interact with the font. And this video is the story behind my project, Crystal Type. I had been reading about applications of data science and typography, and in particular, style transfer for fonts is what interested me. The idea of only designing a few characters and then being able to apply that style to an entire set of glyphs. I wanted to try it, and thankfully, some people had open sourced their code. I had the most success with Deepfect font. It synthesizes a full alphabet given only a few glyphs input. This is the paper, and these are the authors. Getting these repos to run on my computer took a lot of trial and error, but eventually, using the test data, I had the test command running successfully, which was able to generate the letters in this folder. Since this is using test data, the next step is figuring out how to use my own data, which requires installing FontForge. I had a hard time doing this on my Mac, but after installing Linux, which you can see here, it worked. I tested it with these three slightly warped letters, A, B, and I in the top row, and the model output the letters below, which was interesting enough for me to decide to use it in my project. Since models are trained on existing digital fonts, I wanted to start with a source from the physical world. I saw this tutorial about growing salt crystals with borax and food coloring, and I want to try it with letters. So I first made letters with wire and pipe cleaners to hang inside of glass cups. Then I used a kettle to pour hot water inside and I waited about one day. I wanted to experiment some more, so I made some more letters and this time I decided to put them on the stove instead. I thought that the temperature might make a difference. Third, I wanted to play with the idea of letters as modular pieces, like circles and lines that I could digitally arrange into letters. Finally, I was getting lazy and I found these wood letters and I just dumped them all into a bowl and covered the lid and let the crystals grow overnight. And out of the different letters, I found that, that after I vectorized them, the wood ones actually created less complex paths that worked better with Deepfect font, which only accepted glyphs up to 50 paths. So for each letter, I took photos, cleaned them up in Photoshop, traced them in Illustrator, and then I brought them into glyphs. And here I mostly fixed the kerning, for example, here like the P and the A spacing is off. And I also added alternate characters for some of the letters that stood out too much and disrupted reading. Like for example here, the E is really distracting. So my alternates are E, F, and H. Um, and I also increased the weight from 100 and made it into a variable font, which I will show you. So I'm going to change the weight here. Um, any value between 100 to 400. And I can also turn on and off the alternate characters here. Then I took these letters and I input them into Deepfect font and I'll show you the synthesized glyphs that were output. So DVF provides PNG and SVG, but also shows them all in um, an HTML file, which is really nice. So I'm just going to download this so I can show you in my browser. Um, some notes, I used the pre-trained model and I didn't run refinement on the glyphs, which could make the results different. But yeah, out of these letters, I picked a few to create some more fonts, which I will show you. So the first one that I made was kind of like alternating a mix of letters that were input and letters that were output. And that is what I call in between traced and learned. Learned is all from defect font and these crystal ones all use crystal images. For GradX, I was thinking about how I wanted people to interact with my font. A keyboard is kind of boring and there's too much that could go wrong with keyboard shortcuts. So I wanted to have a mic instead that people could talk into and their words would show up on the screen. A Whisper API had just come out, so I wanted to try it for speech to text. I was looking up examples of how to implement it, 
but most of them were like you record something and then send that recording to the API and I needed something more real time. Thankfully, this person created a React hook for Whisper. But when I tried it, I was surprised at how high my API usage was. And this is because it uh, sends the entire audio stream from the beginning based on the time slice seconds. So even though it's 0 0.006 cents per minute, I actually paid like one cent for a few seconds of testing because for let's say a 30 second recording, I wasn't paying for 30 seconds. I was paying for like one plus two plus three all the way to 30. And after some napping math, this over the five days of GradX would cost me about over $4,000. So I decided to instead just leave the website running in a loop where it would record for five seconds, send the recording to Whisper, display whatever got transcribed, and then repeat. And at the end of the GradX, I ended up only paying about $5. Now let's just do a demo of the website. It's recording for five seconds right now, and then it will display. So remember my vision of GradX. I was also gonna put up three posters, but in my head, I imagined that there was going to be a white wall behind. When I got to the space that we were designated, I realized it was glass and I wasn't really vibing with that. So I measured the space and I found that covering it with 40 tablet sized posters would work, but that meant I had to figure out what to put four days before the exhibition. I did have some photos, screenshots, notes, and of course my font. So I had a lot of fun figuring out what the layout should be. I also wanted to go through like each poster briefly so these four are showing the series of fonts and the progression from crystals to trace to learned. And these are just the traced, traced with alternate characters, variable weights, the in-between font and deep fact font. These are photos of when I was growing the crystals submerged in water, how they turned out with wire, pipe cleaner, and when I put them into a bowl. This row is mostly DVF outputs, so all the different X's overlaid on top of each other, uh, the DVF letters with crystal pieces, and more just playing with the letters. And down here are some process, process so the DVF paper, a uh, screenshot from when I was making the alternating font. I wasn't sure how I felt about this font initially, but I kept going back to look at it. And someone wise was saying that it's like the feeling that you get when your work turns out unexpected. And I was being a human whisper API, transcribing it into my font proofing. This is a really big screenshot of my arena channel of notes and things I collected while I was working on this project. And also where I got a lot of quotes for these posters. So this one is by Kurt Vonnegut. Some of the text is in the traced font and for some of the sentences I used only the crystal formations, this alphabet here. It was inspired by David Carson's use of dingbats to set a full interview in and the full quote is here. I like this quote because you could go online and buy a hundred envelopes and save time and money, which a lot of the time is what technology is about. But we're not alive just to save time and money, and sometimes you just want to dance around and go outside and get one envelope. In a shorter way, you could also say, what's the point if we can't have fun, which is also the title of this piece by David Graeber. Another side of this project was also thinking about the way we communicate. Uh, McLuhan's medium as the message was really influential, and I was thinking about fonts as a medium. Here, this is in traced font and the images being masked are actually the photos of growing the crystals. This is one of the pages of the book about Facebook's mission that they gave out to employees back in 2012, laid over, overlaid with some of my notes. Uh, this is the famous quote, technology is the answer, but what was the question with the in-between font on top and the traced font in the bottom? It's a QR code. And then this is a layout of all the posters in order. So I put this in the bottom right of the wall and then I could just reference it when I was putting up the posters. After I finished this, I got hit with another curveball. So the smallest screen that was available was actually this TV and the time window had passed for me to get a desktop monitor. I didn't want to cover up that much of my posters, uh, but luckily no one was assigned to the space next to mine. So I could put the screen here, but then the screen with the 
glass would feel disjointed from the wall with the posters. So I decided to print these out and I put them up. Then I started setting up my Whisper app. Originally, I was using a Chrome stick that you just plug into the TV and it turns it into an instance where you can just like browse the web. But I opened my website, connected my mic and tried it, but there were so many things going wrong. At first, the font wasn't even loading, but I fixed that by putting the font in the public folder. Then I opened the console and I found that it wasn't even sending the transcription request to Whisper. It might be that Chrome Stick doesn't work very well with interactive elements, but to this day, I still don't know the exact issue. I sat there doing some troubleshooting, but the exhibition was the next day, so I decided to pivot and connect a laptop to the TV instead, which meant that I had to make a box to hide the laptop. It worked out pretty well because the table was kind of low anyways, and I needed the mic to be higher up. So after covering it with some black paper and adding some context to the setup, it was ready to go. Radix was fun. It was interesting to see people interact with my projects. And my project was also visible from the window outside, which was pretty cool. And I found that a lot of people like to make random indistinguishable sounds into the mic to see what would come out. They also like trying different languages, which sometimes works out really well because Whisper does translations. Like I heard one person say, est-ce que tu parles français? And it would show as, do you speak French? Another thing that I didn't expect was that some people were like, how is this working? And looking behind the TV and saying like, is there an Alexa somewhere? It made me realize that even though speech to text is a pretty common technology, when it's used in a different context, it can become more unexpected. I also had the privilege of having my work displayed in OCAD's Great Hall, so it was really cool to see my letters up there and also on the wall and at the entrance. And I can't forget my yayo moment where I tried to dress in the same color as my project for the exhibition. And GradX was five days, so I had five fits. Finally, if you want to check out the other works at GradX, I'll put all the links below and you can read more about my project here. Also, if you want, you can buy prints here. Let me know if there are any other designs you want. And if you want to use the fonts, they are free and open source on GitHub.